Welcome to another live stream. Uh, today we are starting off with Siggy and uh, she is due in just a few days and I wanted to share the excitement because she's ginormous, although she's over there. Come here, Sig. Hi, mommy. Can we show everybody your belly? Come here, mama. So Siggy is Diamond's sister, if you guys don't already know that. Um, full sister from the same litter. And so she is a standard. She was bred to Simba. And look at that belly. She got babies. So when she's calm and lays down, we can feel the moving, which is really cool. And she is gonna pop very, very soon. So I wanted to start off with her, just so you guys can see how big she is. She's also a toy hog, so she's gonna hog everything, huh? Oh, you're looking for the bones. Oh, there it is, there it is. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. So we are going to start off with a few housekeeping rules. Um, if you guys are new to our channel, I would ask that you would do me a favor and type new into the comments below so that way we can acknowledge you and welcome you guys. So do that. And then also a couple other things. If you guys have questions that you want to ask, we ask that you please put three question marks before your question and then after your question uh, because as Alexis tries to go through the, the hundreds of comments, she has a hard time finding the ones that are actual questions and the ones that are comments. So do me a favor, put in those three question marks before so that she can um, find you guys rather quickly. And then um, we will bring out some other dogs. We'll have some questions. I wanted to go over some Q&A stuff, but I also wanted to go over a little history on how we started um, with the Alaskan Klikai and the family and all that good stuff. So we're gonna go over some of that stuff as well. But if you guys are new, please make sure to give us a thumbs up because YouTube loves to see those thumbs up and the engagement with all of you guys. So we are going to, come here, Sig. We're gonna um, get her out of here so we can bring some puppies and show you guys some new views. We do have one new camera angle today, which we're kind of excited about. We haven't even let the puppy see it yet, but Lex, if you want to pan over there, we have a ball pit. And so we're gonna see how the puppies do um, in the ball pit. And so you guys can see if they jump in there. Of course, the older dogs all love the ball pit, um, but the little guys haven't seen it yet. So we'll see how that goes here in a few minutes. And um, I'm gonna, let little Missy relax with her bone in her crate for a little while, okay? You ready? You ready? Come here. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, okay, okay. I'm gonna put you away for just a minute, okay? Can we just switch over to Sasha? Sure. Um, oh, one thing I do need to tell you guys. We're having a problem with our sound, which is why it took us a few minutes. Um, our sound upstairs is not working, so I don't have Sasha um, with sound, but at least you guys can see how they're developing. Of course, I'll get them down here in a little bit so you can see them close up, um, but they are almost four weeks old tomorrow. They'll be four weeks old, so they are both gray and white, one boy, one girl, and you can see them right now while we put uh, Miss Siggy away and get you guys some puppies. Come on, Mommy. Let's
Go ahead. Throw me. We're good? Yep. Okay. All right. So we have Cessna's puppies out right now. She's kind of going crazy. Hopefully she'll be quiet with her bone. Otherwise I will um, bring her in here. But last week we showed you Cessna's puppies. They were born on 4th of July. And so they are like 10 days old now. And um, the little boy who is much bigger, oh wait, they're both girls. The bigger girl, sorry, I'm mixing them up with Sasha's. Um, the bigger girl is already starting to open her eyes. So I'm gonna show you. So for anybody that's new, um, newborn puppies are born with their eyes closed and they don't open them until 10 to 14 days old. And I don't know, yeah, she's starting to open. Am I good? Uh, it's a little bit blurry because it's focused on you right there. Better? And so she's just starting to open her eyes and her sister still has her eyes closed completely. And if you remember what she looked like, is it focusing on me again? Um, remember, she is the one that has really dark markings on her face, but then she's really light everywhere else. So she's really cool looking. But both of these girls are gray and white. And so I wanted to talk to you about the grays because a lot of times um, what you see here at one week old, two weeks old, eight weeks old is very, very different than what you will get in a um, adult. So the grays and the very light reds will change dramatically. And so we sold a puppy to an amazing lady named Judy and she's a gray and white and she did this great collage for us um, showing us all of the changes throughout like six months, I wanna say. And so I thought this would be awesome to share with you guys because you'll be able to see the transition from a two week old puppy all the way to a six month old puppy. And hopefully Alexis has that image so she can throw it up on the screen. Yeah. So as you guys can see, um, is am I in the screen, Alexis? Or yeah. Can, okay. Because I, I don't remember. I think it starts at two weeks. One of the two. Okay. So can you just explain, like, say, say what they are, like one to two? They can see your cursor too. No, they can't. They can't. Uh -huh. Oh. So, okay. I thought they could. Um. Well, I can't see it, so you'll have to read off what it is. One to two weeks. Okay, so one to two weeks, you see how really light they are. So whenever we talk about the really light gray, and remember when I showed you these guys and I was like, they're very light gray. So Simba was really light gray as well. Um, he was actually a little lighter than these girls. Um, but just to give you an idea, this uh, picture here shows you from week to week how much they changed. Um, I believe it also shows the back, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So you can see her back and how dramatically that changed. Um, you want to let Cessna in here? Yeah. From nine weeks to 24 weeks or uh, six months is where you see four pictures of her back. Okay, perfect. So um, that way you guys get a really good idea of how much they change. So the really light reds do um, something very, very similar, although it's not gray, it's red. So um, if you are seeing a light red puppy, um, that's probably what you're gonna see as an eight week old is not nothing like what you will see <laughs> compared to as um, a five, six, seven, eight month old. Um, so just to give you an idea, and if you guys um, are new, you may not remember what Cessna, or you may have never even seen Cessna, um, but a few weeks ago she was on the live when she was pregnant, and now she is a mama. Are you happy now? Your baby's trying to follow you because she smells you. Um, so hopefully this will keep her quiet. So any questions at this point? Yeah. Okay. Do we have any new people? Yes. Okay, can you put them on screen? Mm -hmm. 
so we can say hello to some new people. Jerrica. Hi, Jerrica. Welcome to our channel. Shayna. Hi, Shayna. Oh, I know who Shayna is. I talked to her earlier. Hi, Shayna. Uh, Tim. Hi, Tim. Erin is on with Isla. <laughs> Hi, Erin and Isla. Welcome and back. Here, and then you. we do have a question. Okay, perfect. Um, before I get into the question, I did want to say we are going to send um, somebody something special. It's going to be somebody new. So for all of you new people that are shy, if you haven't typed in new, make sure you type in new because we made some masks. And because we are obviously going back into quarantine full time, um, I thought, okay, this will be cool. So I made some masks. So guess what? One of you is going to get it. Um, so one of you new people is going to get a new mask. And what I need for you to do, if you are new, please do me a favor and either send me an email or put in the comment below your email address with the word new so that when we pick you, we can get your address. Obviously, we aren't going to ask for that information on the internet. So if you're okay with sending your email address on the thread, please do that. If you are not, then send me an email saying that you were new, that you put the comment in the comments on our YouTube, and then if you guys are picked, we will send this off to you guys uh, either tomorrow or Monday, and that will be for one new person. So I will go ahead and take a couple questions. Okay. Uh, first That's question. I know last week you talked about vitamins, but I could I could hear, hardly hear it. Um, I was wondering what brand was what the brand was, and if they you. I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> And I was wondering what the brand was and if you could possibly, if they could possibly help with my clique that has factor seven. Um, so, but the vitamins are more for like their immune system, building up their immune system, their coat, their eyes, in case you have a dog that has allergies, it can help with allergies. Um, it's not going to help with factor seven. However, when you say that your dog has factor seven, um, are you saying that you have a dog that's affected by factor seven? Uh, because if so, that's um, concerning to me because as a breeder, we have done our part to weed out factor seven. Um, and so if your dog is just a carrier for factor seven, you have nothing to worry about. Um, if in fact you are saying your dog is affected by factor seven, um, that's alarming. I would like to hear a little bit more about that. Um, and then for any of you guys that is not really sure what we're talking about here, factor seven is something that um, showed up probably about, gosh, I wanna say eight or 10 years ago now. Um, and it is a bleeding disorder that one of the Alaskan clique high back east um, was diagnosed with whenever they were getting neutered. And so Cessna, Cessna, get over here. Um, and so, that's how it became aware and all of us did testing, genetic testing, and so we know um, now we were able to weed it out. If our dog is a carrier, they can still be bred to a clear, but if you have two carriers, you would never breed them together. So genetically speaking, two carriers could produce an affected dog. And um, if they're a carrier or clear, they're not gonna have any symptoms or signs, but if they are affected, they could. And so that's why I'm a little concerned that um, she's saying maybe her dog is affected because hopefully we're all doing our part not to produce any clique that are affected by this. We, we have the testing available to us. Cessna smells the, the, the satin balls. So hopefully all of you guys watched our video we made um, a few days ago on satin balls and Nala, uh, she has a satin ball in here that she just went outside and missed. So Cessna wants it, so I'm gonna let her have it. You want that, huh? Come in. Come on. Um, do you have another question, or is that person talking about it? Uh, she did not say anything. But can you can you explain our three question mark things again? Some people are not saying that. 
Or they didn't hear it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The three question marks? Yes, I will say that again. Okay, so if you guys just hopped on, um, a quick reminder, if you guys have a question, please make sure you put the question marks before your question so that it is easy for Alexis to identify your questions. Otherwise, they can get missed, especially as a lot of people hop on and more people start making comments. It's hard for her to decipher what's a question and what's a comment. So if you're skipped, it's probably because you didn't put the question marks before. So please put three question marks before and after your question. How soft or coarse is their fur? Most of our dogs have very soft um, fur. Some of them are a little coarser than others, but they're still very soft. Um, trying to think of what to compare with. So if you've ever touched an Eskimo, uh, an American Eskimo is probably a little softer um, than most Klikai. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Like a Sheba is probably a little coarser. Um, but for the most part, they're pretty soft, especially their undercoat. That undercoat is really dense, but it's really soft, like fluffy soft. So when you start grooming a clique high and the undercoat starts coming out, it just poofs everywhere because it's so soft. Uh, the next one is, what time of the year do they blow their coat? Uh, that's a great question. So. I live in California and so we don't have the real seasons that a lot of you may have if you live outside of California and so we don't see that our dogs shed in the summer and in the winter. Um, what we see typical is it depends on their age so depending on what month they're born in usually around four months old they're going to shed that puppy coat and then every six months from there is when they're going to blow that coat. So I don't see a season. I see a trend of every five to six months based on when they blow that first puppy coat. Uh, how do you estimate size? Also, what's the biggest clique that you've seen and the smallest as adult in pounds? Um, what was the first part? How do, how do I how do, how do I how do I estimate? Okay, so I estimate the size based on my experience. I've been breeding Alaskan Klee High since two thousand and three, and so over the years we kind of know what we're doing. We don't always get it right. Don't think we do because we don't. Um, but we have a pretty good idea based on their weight, based on the size of their feet, the size of their head, the size of their ears. So a lot of that can tell us a lot about what size we think they're going to be. So over the years, keeping track of weights at a week old versus four weeks old um, gives us a pretty good idea. Sometimes, of course, it does determine the parents, but a lot of Klikai can produce all three sizes regardless of the size of the parents. So two standard Klikais can produce toy size Klikai puppies. In fact, we can have all three sizes in the same litter. So we really don't know for sure what we're gonna get. It's kind of the fun of everything because Cessna's going absolutely bonkers. Honey, you wanna give her one of them? Yeah. Um, so that is the cool part is that we can actually, we can actually get um, all three sizes, which is really cool. So it's kind of exciting to say, well, we don't know, just like, you know, whenever somebody has Rottweiler puppies, they're all stamped the same, right? They pretty much all look the same. With this breed, it's really exciting because they all look different and we never know what we're gonna get. Um, and then the second half was... Uh, what? What is the uh, biggest what is the and biggest the smallest, smallest? they've seen in pounds? Yes, okay, so the smallest um, is, I would say, you can see a bunch of people online say what size their dog is, but me personally, um, the smallest I've seen is eight pounds, and she's pretty small. She, in fact, she was just here a few weeks ago. Um, she is, I want to say, under 12 inches tall and really small, really, really small. 
The good thing with her is that she, um, her head and everything was proportionate to her body. So a lot of the really small dogs, uh, not only Klikai, but just small dogs in general, they don't always look proportionate. Like they may have their head look too big or their eyes are too buggy and their legs are too short kind of thing. Um, so the goal is if you're gonna have toy size in your breed, in your breeding program, you want them to be at least look proportionate. So if they don't, they shouldn't be bred and that's the goal. So again, we don't really try to get a whole lot of toys just because we want them to look like Alaskan Klikai. We want them to look like a miniature version of a Husky. Um, we do get them, we do have them in our breeding program, but we want to, our goal is obviously to make sure that everything that we produce is within the standards, but also that it looks like. So say you see a Klikai just as an outline in the dark. You want to be able to say, oh, that's a Klikai. Just like when you see an outline of a Sheba, they know what it is, or an outline of an Eskimo, or an outline of a German Shepherd, they know what it is, and that's the same with the Klikai, is that's our goal. Um, so that's for the toys. And then uh, standards, I've actually seen Klikai go oversized. Um, so they can be, it's pretty rare now because most of us do a good job of making sure that we weed out anything that's producing too large of um, offspring, but they can get up to 18, 19 inches tall um, and 35, 40 pounds. I've heard of a few click high being up to 40 pounds. Um, I don't know that any came from us, but I do know we have produced a few oversized um, click high where they're 18 and a half, 19 inches tall. Um, so that's a throwback. It's pretty rare, but it does happen. What size is Cessna? She's a very small standard. So she's right over 15 inches. Oh, uh, who's are, who's were the puppies on camera? Oh, these are Cessnas. So the two puppies on camera right now are Cessna and Trout. I'm sorry, Cessna and Simba. And um, both are standards. So Simba is a gray and white standard and Cessna is a black and white standard. Hi, baby girl. Um, if, do we have a lot of questions or can I dive into uh, the, I have, the... I have one more about um, the dog she said that was factor seven. Oh, wonderful. Yes, let's hear it. Um, according to the Wisdom DNA test results, he is at risk for factor seven deficiency, and and I have noticed some small issues when he gets little cuts, but at the same time he was fine when he got neutered. Hmm. Um. Have you reached out to your breeder and um, talked to your breeder about that? First of all, second of all, you can have your dog tested. Um, for factor seven, it's a swab that you do inside their cheeks. And if you want, you can email me and I can give you the link to um, the company that you can order those from. It's called Vetgen. It's V-E-T-G-E-N, just in case you don't want to email me. Um, but you can go on to their website or call them and order a factor seven kit. Um, and it's a swab. So they'll mail you a set of three swabs. You'll swab the inside cheeks and you'll mail it off. And they're usually like two to four weeks out before you get results, but that will give you some reassurance on um, your puppy. And if you really do have something to be concerned with, um, I would do that just to be on the safe side. Okay, and then uh, she said, yes, I told them and let them know. And yes, I will email you tomorrow. Okay. Perfect. And then Perfect. we do have two questions. Okay, before you jump over to the other questions, uh, just a reminder, if you guys are new and you just hopped on, please do me a favor and type new in the comments because we are going to send a new mask to one of our newest members that joined on our live stream tonight. So please make sure you do that. And also so we could say hi and welcome you guys to our channel. Okay, go ahead with the next okay. one real fast. Um, why do some Klikai develop the dark eye stain? I've noticed none of your dogs have it. She said she noticed none of mine have it? Noticed that none of yours <laughs> have it. Um, sometimes, Nala will get it sometimes. It depends on the seasons. But um, a lot of things could play into that. So depending on the weather and if the dog has allergies, um, depending on your water, if the water is affecting them. 
Um, they could be allergic to grass. They could be allergic to different things, food allergies. Um, they could also have clogged tear ducts. So if your Klikai um, doesn't respond to changing your water, changing the food, um, all of those things, and they're indoors for a week and it doesn't clean up, then it's obviously something else. So if it's not outside allergies, allergies to foods, um, water, that type of thing, then I would take them in and have their eyes checked because some Klikai will have either a clogged tear duct and that means that the duct is clogged and they, when their eyes water, it can't actually drain on its own, so it weeps out. And so if it's weeping out, either they need to try to clean and flush out that or um, if they can't, then they can't, but usually they could try to flush it. Another reason why they could have um, tear stains, watery eyes, is if they have ingrown eyelashes. So sometimes their lash won't grow out, it'll grow in, and if it's growing in, it's just irritating the eye, which is causing them to blink more and also causing them to water. So there's a lot of reasons it could be, probably even some that I didn't even list, but those would be what I would start with. Um, so anybody who's on our waiting list, regardless of what state you live in, you get the same communication. Um, so you would still be on the email list. You would still be um, updated anytime we go live or if we update new photos, if we have a new litter. All of that is done by email. So regardless of where you live, it would be the same. It, the difference would be whenever it's time to come home, you would either fly in, drive in to come pick up your puppy, or we would have to ship the puppy to you. But other than that, it's all the same. Okay, and then uh, last one before we switch okay. puppies. Uh, during your 17 years of breeding, how many puppies have you had? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> um, that's not something I've ever really sat down and calculated, uh, so I couldn't tell you. Um, I mean, there are years when we hardly had any, and when I began breeding, we only had a few dogs. Well, I started off with one, obviously, but um, even when we started really breeding and making that uh, more consistent, we still didn't have a whole lot of dogs and a whole lot of litters. So it took us a long time to get to where we are now, um, but I'm not sure. Hundreds. <laughs> I mean, I would, let's just, hundreds. I'm not positive. <laughs> Are we good? Uh, well, I'll hold this one until we switch. Okay, I'm not gonna switch. Um, oh, actually, yeah, I'll, br I'll bring um, Sasha's just because they're a little more active than this little girl, but she's one of my favorites because I wanna keep her. So let's, I'll bring her close and then I'll, I'll bring Sasha's puppies in. So I would normally go up, but because there's no sound, huh. Um, so since I don't have sound upstairs, obviously you can see them up there, but I'm going to bring them down here so that I can continue talking to you guys, answer some questions, but also just give some history about Kika's Klikai and us, um, just so that you guys get a little more familiar with who you're dealing with and all of that fun stuff. So I am going to bring them down real fast and you can, um, you can continue to ask questions on there. Just make sure you put the question marks and we'll be right back. You can switch over if you want, just so they can see them until I get over there. I'm gonna.
No. All right, people, I'm coming back. Okay. Sorry for the inconvenience. We don't know what happened, but my mic upstairs took a poop. And uh, it doesn't want to work. So, oh well, we'll be up here. Um, okay, so these are Sasha and Trout's puppies. Both gray and white, one girl, one boy. And the boy is bigger than the girl, um, and I'll show you here in a minute. And the boy also has a little bit longer, thicker coat than the girl does. Hi, handsome. Um, and the boy is bi-eyed. So for those of you who aren't familiar, bi-eyed is when one eye's blue, one eye's brown or green. It's two different colors. Um, so they'll have two different colored eyes. And then the girl is blue-eyed. Hi, babies. Hi. And so they'll be four weeks old tomorrow. And um, no, you fell off. And so I'll show you the little girl. So right now they're only four weeks old tomorrow. Of course their ears haven't gone up yet, but they will um, because they're still really young. How is that Lex? Good. So that's the girl. Okay, you go over there. Hi handsome. And the boy. So this is the boy. And so he has, if you can see his eye on this side, which is um, his right, is blue. Back up a little bit. Down? It's, it's kind of dark, but... Is it? Yeah. Not real close. No. No? No. 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 We're testing. Sorry, guys. Um, it is dark. Okay. I could shoot the light over here, but that's okay. When we go to scoot down here, you could probably see them better. Um, so what I do want to show you is they're very similar in their actual color. One's a little more gray. One's a little more tan. But the boy is this guy. And he is, I'm trying to see if I can put them close so you guys can see. He's, he's a lot bigger. Um, and... He has a thicker coat, so if you look at their heads, you can see he's fluffier already than hers is. And that's because hers is a little shorter and his is a little longer. And so if you look at the top of their heads, you can see how she has more uh, tan on there than he does. So she's got a little more buff. But remember, the grays will change a lot, so a lot of this buff color is gonna disappear and she'll be gray and white. So she's still gray, um, but a lot of the the grays will have some tan buff color and that'll change when they get a little older, just like we talked about um, earlier. Do you guys like my new chair? <laughs> the, the family laughed at me because I came home with this last night and um, I said, listen, I sit on the ground for two hours and it's hard and it hurts my back. So I got a bean bag. Um, so we'll let them just chill for a little while and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about- Move them back a little bit. Um, the lighting is a little off, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's probably why. Does that help? Maybe? Mm. No? I don't know. I think that's the same, but actually it is a little bit better. You know okay. I mean? Okay. So, let's see. Um, so I don't know how many of you guys are new and never really seen us, but I did want to um, talk about Kika's Click High, how we came up with that name, um, how long we've been around, that type of thing. So um, Kika's Click High is actually named after our first one, and Kika is our very first Click High. Um, she is a light gray and white, and Alexis, you have a picture you want to show? We have, a, we have a few. So when she was little, uh, Kika was born in 2003. Um, when she was you little. Her baby? Yeah. When she was little, um, we didn't have the fancy cameras that we have now. And then, of course, we've changed computers so many times and phones so many times that I didn't have a lot of really good photos of her when she was little. Um, but just so you guys can see how light she was as a puppy. Um, very light. And then, um, are you showing more or? 
I showed her the. I'm showing yes more. Okay. So this as was also her as a puppy, but a different view. Again, different lighting. Yeah. Um. So that's how we came up with Kika's Click High because back then. Um, I didn't really know how to come up with a kennel name. Everyone said you have to come up with a name and a website and all of these things, which was so new to me. So I said, well, she's our first. So of course, she's, <laughs> she's the uh, start of my madness, so she deserves to have the name. Um, so sometimes people will mistake uh, my name for Kika, and they'll call and say, hi, is this Kika? Uh, so just so you guys know, that's my dog, and uh, my name is Desiree, for those of you who don't know. And my daughter is Alexis, and she's on the other side here helping moderate so that I can stay in here and answer your guys' questions while she reads them off. Um, so just that little tip. And then um, we got Kika in 2003 after waiting several years. Uh, we first saw the breed in a Home Depot. Somebody had one in Home Depot. And at the time, we had um, wolf hybrids, and my oldest kids were two and three when Kika came home. Um, they are now <laughs> 21 and almost 20. It's crazy. Uh, so that's how long we've been doing this and um, she is definitely the start of the madness. We had no intentions of showing but we did um, want to breed. We knew that right off the bat. The breeder that we got Kika from, um, her name is Andrea Hayes, and she is no longer breeding. And where are you going? You don't go in there, silly. Um, so she got out of breeding, but still uh, stay in contact with her as much as we can. And um, definitely give her so many thanks because without her setting us up with Kika, uh, we probably wouldn't have the program we have now. Um, Kika has probably been... Um, our best producing, the quality, uh, the temperament, the structure, sure. everything. And so we really started our breeding pop program with one of the best that we could have because she was just such an asset to our breeding program. Um, and <laughs> the puppy's growling. Um, so we started with her, we built a website, we did all this stuff and then um, it was crazy. We had a lot of people asking for puppies when we had one dog and we didn't even have any puppies yet. So we knew we had to get a male and so on and so forth. So anyways, we slowly added dogs. Um, we showed for several years, uh, Brayden and Alexis, which are my older two kids, they traveled with me and we went to Premier, which is an annual show back east. Um, Alexis was miserable because it's so humid and she was not well. <laughs> to say the least. To say the least. She was very sick. <laughs> um, and so she had to stay in the car most of the time with the air conditioner on because it was so hot and humid. But anyways, we did a lot of dog shows traveling, uh, top 10 things, which if that's all new to you guys. Top 10 is like the top 10 top dogs um, each year will go to Premier, which is in Michigan, and compete for the winner for the year. And so we did that, I wanna say eight or nine years. Um, we always had dogs in the top 10. It was awesome. We had a lot of fun. We met a lot of great um, people that are now our friends. In fact, some of them, geez, Julie Baker was in my wedding. Um, so some of them have become really, really close friends and it's been amazing, we love it, but once uh, we had Ethan, which he is now 11, um, that kind of changed things with dog shows and we decided we really need to take a step back from that and focus more on family. Um, unfortunately, we did have an accident with Ethan um, that um, we almost lost him and um, when that happened, it really changed my perspective on life and what was important and what wasn't important and so the dog shows were put on hold um, and then we just pursued other things. Um, I also worked full time um, in the aerospace industry uh, for several years and also uh, before that I worked in uh, the marble and granite industry. So I was a purchasing manager and did the dogs part time and then um, corporate decided to move to Georgia. So I had no intentions of moving to Georgia and decided to stay home 
full time with the kids and the dogs and that's how we became what we did. Um, and that's a little history on us and how we got started, how the name evolved, um, all of that fun stuff, why we don't really do dog shows anymore, that kind of stuff. So if you guys have any questions with that, let me know and Alexis will read them off. Oh, we have tons of questions. <laughs> okay. To start way back here at the top. <laughs> how many dogs are pregnant right now? <laughs> uh, two. <laughs> are pretty rare um they're pretty rare because we want them to be rare um so the breed standard states that a white clay kite is um, a default and that is because they don't have a mask so because they don't have a mask and linda sperlin who created the breed um wanted these little miniature huskies to have a mask the white ones do appear yes they can come from the siberian husky and even the alaskan husky but they can also come from the American Eskimo. So when Linda created the breed, she used four breeds. One of them was American Eskimo. So her fear is that we're gonna get overrun by whites, white Eskimos, and we're gonna call them clay pies. So she decided that that was not something she was interested in. So that's why we don't get a lot of whites, um, and it is by choice. So we know all of our dogs that can produce the white and um, sometimes we do pair them together intentionally like we did with cashmere and trout um, and we got one white one but we also got two grays and so it just depends on the genetics and what we're trying to accomplish but our goal is not to produce whites sometimes we are going to get them but it's not because we want a bunch of white puppies it's because genetically we see something else that we're trying to get have you ever seen a Klikai stay a tan color? Um, like this buff coloring? Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. So while Rue um, is got a lot of tan color in her, um, but she also has a lot of gray. So she does have a lot of it, but if you're talking more like Sheba, like black and tan, no. Um, but if they if they're gray like this, a light gray, they're not gonna keep it. But the darker grays, which will bring Rue's puppies in in a minute, and you'll see there's two, she has two gray and white boys, and one of them is identical to her, um, and he's gonna keep a lot of that brown coloring because his mom has it, so I'm sure he will too, because he looks just like her. Okay. At what point can you tell the coat length? Um. These guys are almost four weeks old and I could tell a week ago. So you can tell pretty quickly if you've been breeding a while. So I've been doing this a long time, three weeks. Uh, real quick, uh, talk about the question marks one more time. <laughs> okay guys, one more reminder. Also you can, Alexis, you could put that in the comment in the little thing and just have it keep cycling through. Oh, you're right. Um, but real quick, if you guys um, are relatively new or maybe you forget, because I know it's hard to remember all of these things, please put three question marks before your question and after your question. So that way when Alexis is going through to read all of your questions, she finds you and she doesn't skip you because we've had a problem, you know, last few times where we skip over people. It's just hard for her to monitor all of the comments, which we, we love. We want to see all the comments and we in encourage you guys to comment. But if you have a question, please put the question marks. Okay. Um, what is the wrap around the bottom of the pen upstairs? Um, <laughs> sure. One, it, with one of the moms with no, the mom with no sound, so with Sasha. Yeah. Um, I have the same pen, and Iris keeps escaping <laughs> through the slightly wider door. <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you my secret because I know that's either Jack or Aaron. What I did is I bought a sheet of linoleum, just a little sheet of linoleum, and I weaved it through. <laughs> and then I clipped the two ends, and so that way they can't get through. Um, that's what I did up there. Because when I have really small puppies, they can actually squeeze through the little bar like you're talking about um, on the sides of the gate even. So that's why we did that. 
Um, it also helped because it prevented, if they spelt their water, it didn't go splashing everywhere. So that's what we did. Okay. What do you think the size of the puppies you're holding will be? Um, I haven't weighed them this week. Um, Minnie the standard for sure. He's, he's kind of big. He's a little porky. Let me see. Let me see. So I would say he's probably going to be a standard. And without weighing. I know more too when I weigh them. But they're both pretty good size. I think both are going to be large mini to small standard. I think, actually, I think the boy's going to be a standard for sure. And the girl. So right now what I'm doing, in case you guys are wondering, like I'm looking at their head, I'm looking at the size of their muzzle. So the bigger the muzzle, they're going to grow into that. that it's not going to stay with a little head and a big muzzle. So I'm going to be looking at the size of their muzzle, which the boy's muzzle is a lot thicker. It's going to, he's going to grow into that. I look at the size of the crown of their head and I look at the size of these paws. And so they both have pretty good sized paws. The boys is definitely bigger though. And then what I would do in addition to all of that is weigh them. So I want to know what they weigh. Of course we weigh them every week, but I haven't weighed them this week because tomorrow they'll be four weeks old. And then I'll compare and I'll look and see what they weighed um, at birth versus at four weeks old. And then obviously my history of knowing kind of uh, what they weigh at four weeks, what they're going to be. And these guys are, they're chunks. Huh. Okay, keep going. Did the boy get his thick coat from his mom? Will he, will we expect his coat to be like hers? I think he's going to have a better coat than hers. Um, he has a really nice coat. Um, not that she doesn't because her coat is actually really nice. Like you can see the guard hairs on her on her coat. So she doesn't have a super short coat. If she had a super short coat, I wouldn't be able to see all these guard hairs and everything poofy, which I can, but she looks like she has a short coat compared to him because he has such a beautiful coat. Like this is a die for coat right here. Huh? This is a Simba coat, by the way. Simba had the same thing. Like if you guys go look at Simba's picture or video, um, the, the, I think it was one month to one year, um, transformation and you look at him he looked just like this poofy he was a little lighter in gray but his coat was identical and Simba's coat's amazing but he um, right now he's just blew all of his undercoat so it's not fluffy right now except for his tail but that's what his is gonna look like nice nice coat mm. oh here's a good one from when you asked <laughs> Are any of your current dogs in the program related to Kika? Yes, a lot of them are related to Kika. So um, we did our best to try to keep her legacy going. Um, for one, because we think she's so beautiful and um, her coat was to die for. Like Kika had the softest, thickest coat of any, I think of any dog we have. Would you agree, Lex? Oh yes. Yeah, by far. Um, and so of course we wanted to try to continue that as much as we could. Um, so we do have dogs related. In fact, Sasha, these guys, mom is Kika's granddaughter and, um, Nala is Kika's great granddaughter, no. Diamond, Siggy, Rue. No, Nala's her granddaughter. Oh yeah, Nala is her granddaughter. Yeah, she's the last, you're right, you're right. She's the youngest of the, yeah. so so Nala's mom was Kika's very last puppy um, and Nala was her last litter. And um, so yeah, you're right. So Nala and Sasha are Kika's closest relation uh, because the the direct granddaughters. And then Almost everybody is going to be related at some point, unless I didn't breed them and I bought them from another breeder. But probably every dog that we own, that we bred, is going to be related some way or another. Um, and then the next closest is going to be Diamond and Siggy. So Diamond and Siggy are fourth generations. So it goes Kika, let me think. Kika, Cassie, Cassie McKenzie, 
Ken, and then, yeah. Um, yeah, four. So it goes Kika, Cassie, Mackenzie, and then Diamond and Siggy. So Mackenzie is Diamond and Siggy's mom, and um, Mackenzie was Kika's granddaughter. Yes. <laughs> And then Rue is and Siggy's daughter. Rue is Siggy's daughter. <laughs> and Simba is um, from... Aggie. Yeah, but, but Hunter. He, oh. Aggie's not related, so Aggie came from another breeder. But Simba's father is Hunter, and Hunter is now retired. Simba replaced him um, in our breeding program, but he is um, Kika's... Mom's great grandson. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of relation. Um, it takes a lot for us to plan out our breeding because dogs are related. Like Simba and Nala could never breed together. Um, Simba's dad is Rue's dad, <laughs> so they could never breed together. Simba drives us crazy. So that's why we fought. Trout and Ozzy because we needed to add some new bloodlines because like Zeus, Hunter, all of our older dogs that you guys, if you've been around a while and you've seen like everybody was from Hunter and Zeus, well, they've been our stars for a really long time. And of course we knew, uh oh, they're getting older, they're getting older. So we had to keep um, replacements to continue that line because that's the goal is we know what's healthy and what looks proportionate, what we like to see in the temperaments, the coat colors, the, the markings, all of that stuff. And so we got to keep it going. Hi, Desiree. Zach from Chicago here. Hi, um, Zach. Uh, I've been wondering about raising multiple pups like you do. How do you get them to eat their food and not steal it from each other <laughs> and, get, and each get them separated? Um, so we have these little puzzle, these little puzzle bowls. Babe, can you give me the puzzle bowl right there? Um, they're really made it's on the side, uh, the little red paw yeah. puzzle um, or the blue bone one. Um, we have these puzzles. They're really made for dog enrichment, but they have little... Uh, pockets and in each pocket is um, where we would put their food instead of their treats and so we would use this a lot yeah and then um, so if you see this here <laughs> it, it normally comes with these little canisters that would go over each one of these little holes and you could put a treat in them and it's a puzzle where they got to get the thing off in order to um, get the treat but when I saw these I knew instantly I wanted them to be puppies because I can put food in each one of these and then literally stand over them to make sure they're staying in their bowl and then as they get older it, it's there's no winning um, you can stand over them and try to watch them but the truth is the fast eaters are gonna get more and I gotta swoop them up uh, so it's a struggle <laughs> Usually when our puppies leave here, they scarf down their food. Like the first day or two, they act like they're starving. They scarf down their food because they think if they hurry up and eat theirs, maybe they're going to go find somebody else's. Within a couple of days, they stop doing that and they realize there's no more competition. Hi, baby. Are those two puppies Simba's? No, but they're related uh, just because Simba and Sasha are distantly related, but no. They are not. You would think, I would think, but then again, Simba and Trout look very similar. Um, very similar coloring, but Simba's bigger and um, Simba's double blue eyed and Trout is, he's blue and party, but he's almost bi eyed. His party eye is primarily brown. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> um, can you tell which will stay a lighter gray and which do you think oh and do you think you will get any reds anytime soon um yeah we can tell on the lighter grays um because their coloring mm -hmm. is very different like the boy this boy he's gonna his face look at how light his face is um he doesn't have a lot of buff coloring in him there's no browns um he is gonna stay pretty light and i think he'll look a lot like his dad which is trout 
And then the girl, she's got more, um, more distinct markings when it comes to like the darkness. So you can see she's got more buff, more tans, more browns, and um, her undercoat is also going to be how you can tell. So like whenever you look at the light gray and whites, if you see their undercoat color, that's going to help you identify the lights from the darks. So if the undercoat is white, like this guy's, you see how white it is, hopefully, because I'm kind of far away, um, they're going to stay pretty light. So the top coat really is going to change, but it's not going to change a whole lot. It's deceiving because of the undercoat. So the color of the undercoat is what will make it look either lighter or darker. So a lot of black and whites will um, kind of look a dilute black or a salt and pepper. Some people will call them a salt and pepper and they're not really a jet black. And that's because their undercoat is very light. Their, their guard hairs are still black. But because the undercoat is light or dark, that's what's really taking it and saying, oh, this is really a jet black dog because black on black is really jet black, but a white on black makes it more salt and peppery. So same with the grays. It's pretty deceiving when they're really young because you guys don't know, but over time you'll start to see the differences and um, the coat underneath is what's really going to... Um, Tell me which way I'm going to be able to say yes, light, or dark. Hi, Pancake. Hi, Um. Hi, <laughs> Sasha's puppies seem like they have very chill personality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do. You know, it's funny. Um, they have their moments for sure, and I need to work on a new video for them, but they were sleeping because um, mom was nursing earlier, and now they're passed out. But they have their moments and they are not as rambunctious as some of our past puppies. A lot of times, if we have a litter of three or four or five all growing up together, you'll see them come out of their shell a lot faster. So these guys are just barely four weeks tomorrow. It's nap time and they're just chilling. Also, this is the first time they've been in here. You guys can't see all of this, but there are it's like a studio. There's lights everywhere and um, probably echoes a little bit. And so they're just chill, like what's going on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they do have personalities. They're just sleepy heads. Huh. Huh. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you for the kisses. Oh, thank you for the kisses. Thank you. Are you guys going to wake up? Anyone? Uh, Erin said that that was exactly what happened when they brought Isla home, that uh, she would scarf down her food and that we, they thought sometimes that um, she would stop eating so much and she just kept. Oh, yeah, no, she won't stop. You got to stop her. So that's another thing like um, newborns. Newborn humans, they don't really know when to stop eating and that's the same for young puppies. Um, if we put a half a bag of dog food, they would devour it all and they'd all be sick to their stomachs because they don't know, they don't have the triggers, I don't know, to know that uh, I'm full, I shouldn't eat anymore. <laughs> um, and so yeah, if you give them too much, they'll eat it all, then they'll just make a mess all over your floor. <laughs> You mentioned two ladies were pregnant. Who else is pregnant besides Siggy, and when do you expect those puppies? Oh, those are secrets. We can't tell you all our secrets. <laughs> Who is that? Uh, Lindsay Marlette. Oh, Lindsay. I'll be emailing you guys tomorrow. But we have confirmed another pregnancy, and um, I'll be letting you guys know tomorrow. Hopefully, we're going to do an ultrasound if I have time. Plus, my daughter's been sick. So if you guys notice, you haven't seen her on camera, and that's because she says she's not up to it. Um, she hasn't felt good. She's had a head cold for the last three or four days, and um, that means I lose a helper. <laughs> so hopefully she's getting better, and um, she'll be able to help me, and we'll do ultrasound and stuff tomorrow. Um, do you know the eye color of the two puppies that you have in front of you? Yes. Uh, the little boy has one blue eye, one brown eye, and the little girl has two blue eyes. Um, so the boy's by eye, the girl's blue eyed. And mom is blue eyed and dad is blue and party, but pretty much he's party eyed. 
Um, he has barely a speck of blue in his brown eye. And um, I do want to say a quick reminder, if you guys are new, please make sure to type new in the comments below. We are going to pick a winner. Um, hopefully you'll be on here whenever we do pick that winner. If you guys are new, please make sure you either email me, my email is down in the description below, or it's on my website, um, letting me know that you're new so that I'm able to get a hold of you guys so we can mail you a mask. Um, obviously, I'm sure you're all in the States and you all know that we're shutting down again and COVID's kind of going crazy. Um, so we made some masks and so I'm gonna mail one of you guys um, a mask if you are new to our channel. And then if you guys are um, on here and you have a puppy from us, you have to already have a puppy from us and you haven't already won, Jessica, <laughs> um, then I would love to hear from you. Let me know that you guys are on here, that you have a puppy from us. Oh, I already know Aaron's gonna be like me. <laughs> um, so if you have a puppy, adult, any click high from us already, we want to send you a new toy because all of our puppies go home with our famous toy. And um, we mailed somebody one a few weeks ago. So everybody goes home with this squeaker. If you guys are on Instagram, you will see this toy all over the place. If you do, that means they got their puppy from us because nobody else has this toy. Um, so we are going to send you a new toy if you are on here and you let us know. Alexis will pick somebody. If you have a boy puppy, of course, you'll get a, a blue. If you have a girl puppy, you will get a pink. Um, so make sure you guys do that. We'll be picking that soon. And then um, I do want to do a couple housekeeping. If you guys can, please do me a favor and give us a thumbs up if you guys haven't already uh, because YouTube loves to see that interaction and we appreciate you guys um, supporting our channel. Of course, we are on every Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Sometimes we just kind of fly by the seat of our pants and say, let's uh, answer some questions. Um, here shortly, we're gonna bring out all of the older puppies. Uh, I try to answer as many questions as I can before because they are loud and rambunctious and they haven't seen the ball pit yet, so that's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned. If you haven't um, seen that, we will get them in here shortly. What time is it? It is 7.10. Oh, okay. So we're going to get them out here real soon. It just gets really loud, so I like to answer as many questions as I can first. Um, and then if you guys are new, make sure you type in new. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please hit the subscribe button and click that bell so that you are notified anytime we post new videos or when we go live. And then, oh, real quick. yes. Does it count if we have been awarded a baby and haven't picked up yet? Sure. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, and so, uh, again, if you are new, subscribe, and then, uh, what was I going to say? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I guess that's it. We are going to switch gears. Yes? You ready to switch gears? I mean, I guess so. Um, we will bring the rambunctious crew in. So we've got six puppies that we're going to be bringing in. They are ages six weeks to 10 weeks and it's gonna get loud, it's gonna get crazy and we will see how they enjoy the ball pit. And we'll continue to answer your guys' questions, of course, and um, interact with you guys as well. I'm just gonna put these little guys away so Sasha's not freaking out and bring them in. So give us just a minute and we will be back. Um,
Yeah, you know which one I'm talking about? No. Over. Oh, okay. Come here, babies. <laughs> Hi. Okay, guys, we're going to show them the ball pit. Lex, do you have it on the... I have you half and half. Okay, so they've never seen the ball pit. But they're like, no, thank you. Um, on the outside, you know how to do it? Sorry. And then... Um, Oh, Nova, are you a little sneak? Yeah, we got escape artists already, and I can't do it from the other. Um, haha, ha, I tied my shoes in a knot. And okay, okay, so this is Lily's puppies, Rue's puppies. And that is my seat, and that is not yours. And then Nova. So for anybody who's new, Nova is the big baby, and she is ours. We're keeping her. Wow. Don't look into that camera. Oh, yeah. You guys aren't there. <laughs> I don't even know if they can see me down Yeah. Uh, so we are uh, keeping Nova, and so she is part of our family now. And then the um, the two big grays, we got Jeff. This is Jasper. So for those of you earlier that were talking about like, I have you in your bubble. Oh, you talk. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Okay. You're on the you're on your phone and your bubble now. All right. Just so you know, I'm on the phone of the bubble. So the um, the question earlier about can they stay darker? Can they stay brown and buff? Um, the little boy that I was talking about, which is Rue's son, is this guy. And you can see how brown he is. So he is way browner than any other clique I hear. And this is exactly what his mom looked like. And he is going to probably keep a lot of that coloring um, even when he gets older. He'll still have some grays in him. Thank you. But he um, is going to have a lot of browns. And then, so this is Jasper. And then this is Jax, his brother. And he's a big old, big old boy. Well, thank you guys, thank you. And then we have Nova, who is older, and she likes to rule this uh, household. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna sit right here. No, I'm going back to my bubble. Yeah, before you guys pee on my seat. Uh, so remember, we talked about in the past. Um, we use pee pads because we are raising little puppies who are not old enough to be potty trained, to know anything about um, pottying outside, plus they aren't outside all of the time. Um, but we don't encourage all of you guys to use pee pads unless you plan to teach your puppies to potty inside. Um, in a Hopefully it's not too loud. Um, if you have no choice and you don't have a yard where you can um, teach them to go outside, then some people don't have a choice and they'll use like fake grass or, see I told you it would get loud, um, or a pee pad where they have this um, plastic tray which you can put the pee pads in. So we try to encourage them to go over there so I'm not picking up messes everywhere, but they're still young, six weeks old, they're still learning. Um, and we just try to encourage that. But that is- I hear is, puppies upstairs. I, I do hear puppies upstairs and I'm really bummed that our sound's not working up there, but that's okay. I need bones for them. Did somebody get me the paper towels? Yes. Shoo, quit eating me, mister. Um, we will get back to your guys' questions, but I do have to clean up some pee real fast. Alexis? I have you, I have you with Sasha upstairs and you in your bubble. Okay. Are they playing? How? Yeah, they are. See, so earlier you guys were like, oh, they seem pretty chill. Yeah, they were just sleepy heads. Now they're not. Wait. <laughs> they're Don't playing take with the toy. my stuff. Are they playing with the toy? Yeah. Don't do that. Not yet. I gotta get up and clean over here because somebody decided that it was a great idea. But we have sound still, right, Lex? Yep. Okay. Um. All right, so any questions? Watch out! Hi, babies. Are we good? Me? Yeah. Yeah. I said, do we have questions? Oh yeah, tons. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> well, I was I was just looking 
is our first time in our new chair. This ought to be interesting. Let's see how many of them figure out how to get up here. Oh, Nova. Oh. What view are we on now? Just you. Okay, full view. Mm -hmm. So this is the crazies. This is our, our crazy life. Don't fight me. Don't fight me. Anybody watching um, that's getting Kato? That's who I have in my hands right now. And why are you biting me? Huh? Why? 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 Hi. Hi. Aaron and Matthew are talking about their sister and puppies. Hi, Matthew. I'm sorry. Earlier, I think I miss, misspoke, and I called um, you Aaron or Jack. I know what puppy you have. I'm sorry. Okay. Do you recommend feeder bowls for puppies? Slow feeder bowls. Yes, Sorry. oh absolutely. In fact, we have slow feeders for them too. Um, so whenever they outgrow the little uh, paw that I showed you guys earlier, um, then we use the slow feeders. And also if we have some dogs that want to eat very quickly, or puppies I should say, then definitely they'll eat in slow feeders because it slows them down. And it also helps so that the bigger ones don't hog all the food. Why am I your teething toy? I'm not your teething toy. Here. Okay. I think I need um, the bully sticks, honey. Hi. Hi, babies. Hi. Hi. Um, I don't know <laughs> who all is watching, but this is Kina Pop. If you guys remember, here's Miss Cora, and these are Lily and Ozzy's puppies. And then Kato, I just showed you guys a minute ago. Nova, don't eat my shirt. That's not good. No, it's not. You don't eat my water. Can you get them out or you want bags? You can just get them out. That's fine. Um, we've talked a lot about bully sticks. And the puppies are all teething, right? And so we want to encourage them away from chewing on us and to chew on something else. And so what I'm doing now is I asked my husband to get some bully sticks and maybe that will get the puppies um, a little calm and not chew on me and chew on something they can chew on. Uh, there's little Miss Nova. Can they see her? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was inside the inside here. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are on Instagram. That is my shirt. What are you doing? But we posted a video the other day of the, um, I think it was, it was Tina Pock and Kato inside this thing and it was rolling all over the place and they were wrestling with each other. It was super cute. Here. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Do you ever offer siblings together? Um, we, we do. We don't mind that. The problem is, is that it's very difficult um, to get you two puppies at the same time unless you got on the list for two puppies at the same time because uh, we have such a, a demand for puppies that some people will get on the list and then months later decide to get on the list again, but you wouldn't necessarily be able to get siblings because of the time difference between the two deposits. So we definitely do. It's just um, depending on who's wanting which puppies, it could be difficult. Here, there's more. Here. Uh, okay. In general, how often do you get red and white puppies? Are they more rare than gray and white and black and white? Oh, I'm sorry. You probably, you're probably the same person who asked that earlier. I'm sorry. I forgot um, to respond on that. We do actually get quite a few red puppies. It just depends on um, who we've paired together. Um, and it's all genetics that I have no control over. Most of our dogs do have the red gene. Most of our dogs can produce red puppies. So the way the reds work is if both parent dogs carry the red gene, they don't have to be red, but they have the red gene. It's very similar to the white gene where they have to have the white gene, they have to have the red gene. If they both do, then they can give red puppies. Um, a red dog, has to be bred to a dog that has the red gene in order for them to have red puppies. 
So just because the mom is red, uh, perfect example, Aggie is red and white, and um, Hunter is gray and white, and they produce Simba, who is gray and white. So Simba turned out gray, but he has to have the red gene because his mom is red. So that is the only color gene that she could get. <laughs> she could get. Um, so we, we could get them, we just don't always. Um, but we, we do actually produce quite a few reds. Um, it's just this time around, we did get a lot of grays. Um, so like Sasha and Trout both have the red gene. Uh, both could have given red puppies, but they gave two grays. Um, Siggy does not have the red gene. Diamond does not have the red gene. Cora is mad because Nova has th four bones in that bed. Hey, Missy, you better quit stealing everybody's bones. That is not okay. Here. You get one. You don't get four. Okay. How often do we get double brown eyed puppies? Um, mm, not as often as blue. So we do get them. I think in the last batch we had, um, we had one, we probably, oh, what do you think? 15%, 10%? Yeah. Maybe 10 to 15% of the time we have brown eyes. Um, most of our dogs are blue eyed, so uh, we don't get as many brown eyes, but we do get them. So we just sent home a couple of puppies. One was brown from the no, last. Stole the bone, and I got her on camera. You're a bad girl. Nova, no. Here, here, buddy. She has one over there. Yeah, I know. She got up from the bed. I switched cameras to the phone no. view. She went over to one of the, the boys, grabbed his bone, and went back to her bed. And now she's doing it again. Okay. Okay. Guess what? You don't get any. Here. Here. Sorry. Yes. You go hang out with your mother. <laughs> um, but are you going to throw in the play here? Okay. Thank when you. you retire your dogs, do you keep them all? No. <laughs> God, I am, I am, a, no, it's just, it's overwhelming. Like you see my house, you see the crazy, uh, no, there's some that are very dear to my heart and they'll never leave. Um, and then there are some that we just, we feel like we can't give the love to everybody all the time. And especially as we keep adding new dogs to our breeding program, because we're retiring dogs from our breeding program, it's better to let somebody else enjoy that dog and give them one-on-one -on -one attention instead of us hoarding them and not allowing them to just live a happy life when we don't have enough time to give love to everybody. So the goal is when we retire, we give them away or for a very low price to a family that we feel suitable and um, let them live the rest of their life out that way. But there are a few that will never leave. They stay here forever. Uh, they can't see you guys over there. Well, you moved the bucket over I know, I did that, I'm sorry. I got rid of the crazy girl. She can't steal your phones. Here. 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 Mama. Um, how, how, how are we doing on, I'll let you ask one more question and then I'll ask you how we're doing on um, new uh, people so we can see if we want to pick somebody up or give a little more time. We have four people. We have four new people that have entered in the raffle. Okay. Um, Gina, I just seen your message. You can email us. Uh, the link is in the description below the video. She doesn't want to post her email. Oh, perfect. Yeah, actually, honey, why don't you flash my email up there too? Okay. Um, Alexis will put the email address in the... Um, 
the video as well here so you guys can see it. Um, it's pretty simple, AKK for Alaskan Klikai, Mommy, M-O-M-M-Y, at gmail.com. So AKK Mommy at gmail.com, but Lex will put it in there as well, um, just so that it's there for you guys. But yes, definitely, if you are new, just at least tell us new and send us an email, and that way we can add you guys in. And if you didn't hear and you weren't on earlier, um, we are going to send a new person, somebody who has never been on our live stream before, a new mask, um, and that it has our logo. I set it up there, and I'm not going to get up. But we um, will send you guys that here either tomorrow or Monday. And then we are also going to send a new toy to one of our puppy owners. So if you already have a puppy from us, or if you are getting one of these guys right here, then um, let us know in the comments below that you already have a puppy from us, who you have, and that you wanna be included. And Alexis will pick one of you and we will mail you a new toy for your baby. While she's uh, writing all that stuff down, I just want to take a few minutes to say thank you guys for subscribing to our channel. We have so many amazing people that are on here every week, engaging with us, asking questions, learning about the breed, and we love nothing more than to spend a little time with you guys every week and to answer all of your questions. So, <laughs> good one. So we thank you guys for supporting us, and um, we are here every Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi. Hi. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Can you put on the view down low? Yes. Hi. Nobody went in the ball pit. I'm going to have to move the ball pit. I think we should move the ball pit. Yeah, you guys don't even know it exists. Maybe I'll just throw the balls out. Huh? What should we do with it? Here, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I do not want you jumping up there, though. Okay. We do have a bunch of more questions, but I do believe that's it for the raffle. Okay. Maybe if I put the bones in there, Nova would have jumped in. Just <laughs> like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> They're disappearing. <laughs> this ought to encourage you. Let's see. Let's see who's going to be the smart one. Look, look. Oh, you've got to jump in if you want it. Did you? Did you tell them what Brayden Cole's rooms look alike? No, <laughs> I did not. Um, this little guy, oh, you little booger. One of them has a bone that's not in the ball pit. <laughs> you, didn't, you can't have that unless you jump in and get it. Um, so this is something that um, we used to always give all of our other dogs, the puppies, because it's enrichment. So it's mental stimulation. It's definitely teaching them about um, different surfaces and textures and not being afraid of things. And so the sound is different, the squishy balls, the plastic pool, all of this is stuff that's part of socializing and it's important for them in their development of their brain. And so we want to encourage them to go in and so what better way than to pull all their bully sticks and dump them in there? And so far, they kind of think about it, but then they, uh, like, ah, no, they jump back out. Um, so back to what Alexis was saying. Um, Rue is uh, these two boys' mama, and um, one is named Jackson, one is named Jasper. And the one that looks just like Rue, Brayden named her. And, oh, no, Brayden named Alex. Brayden named Rue. Oh. Um, Brayden named Rue, and he calls her twin, which is Jasper, Rupert. So we have Rue and Rupert, although his family is going to name him something different, I'm sure. You are smart, buddy. That's it. Let's see. <laughs> you, can... <laughs> you can do it. You were so close to jumping in there. Look. It's okay. No. He says, no. Hey, quit picking on your brother. Who's going to be the smart?
dark one. I'm gonna pull them out. Let's see. Look, they're just balls, guys. See? Now you want them. Huh. Quit digging on me, goof. Alright, you wanna uh, announce so we can keep going? Or do you want to just keep going? Uh, it's gonna get loud. You go for it. Go loud. It's gonna get loud, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think because of the pool, it's so loud. Oh, now you guys love the balls. Well, now it's gonna take the, the pool out of the way. Okay. Yeah, and then I put my chair back. Okay, go for it. Okay, um. Hang on. That's Hang on, we got last minute. Oh, someone's trying to jump in on the, the, the game, the gifts. I think they just put their emails in late, but they were already in. Okay, for the new people, Jerrica, you're winning the mask. Yay, congrats, Jerrica. If you're on, I hope you are, let us know where you're from. We'd love to hear, are you from California? Are you from out of state? Um, just let us know what city or state you live in, that way we kind of have an idea. And welcome for your very first live stream with us. Hopefully you will see us um, every week on what, Thursday, 6 to 8. Hi, buddy. Hi. And okay. then for the toy raffle, I'm going to go with Carrie. Carrie. Carrie, Carrie's getting a toy for her puppy. All right, so we already know Carrie's got a girl, so we will send you um, your toy, and we will send out the mask either tomorrow or sometime this weekend, by Monday for sure. Um, and Jerrica, make sure that um, you send me an email. Um, Alexis, you have her email? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. I'll send you an email too, just in case you're not on here, and that way we can get this off to you. All right, now we can move on. How many viewers do we have? Uh, we have 66 on now. 66 viewers, how many thumbs up? 63. Oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys for the support. Here. All right, let's go back to questions. Okay. Hang on, I have to find them again because I keep going through everything. Oh, here we are. Okay. Uh, the. Are you still popping them on? Yes. Okay, cool. The. Um, oh, the satin balls that you made in the other video that you posted, do you feed one patty for the whole day or two? Um, so we don't feed those as a meal, a meal replacement. We feel, feed it as a supplement. So. We will do one um, because they're also getting their kibble. And um, we only do it a few times a year. It really depends. Like when it gets pretty warm, the dogs don't want to eat too much. Um, so we will supplement them. But it's not a meal replacement for us. However, it could be for you. Um, and if it were, then it would really depend on the dog um, and how they are. That is my water messy. So if you are going to do it as a replacement, then you would feed the same ounces as you would as raw. Uh, okay. Uh, at what month of age do they reach their adult height? About. Um, usually around 10 to 12 months is when they're going to be done with their height. And then they'll fill out a lot more and they uh, should be completely fully developed by the time they're 18 months old. Um, but height is usually by a year. Um, will Sasha and Trout's boy develop a mask? He doesn't seem to have one yet. Oh, he has one. He it's has just very light. It's very light. Um, so just like Simba and Kika, um, um, that's really the only two I could think of right now, that it will develop even more for sure. 
um, it'll get really dark. So he, it goes all the way down in his nose bar, um, so he'll have the same markings like all of the other gray, like Simba, for sure. What do the puppies go home with to um, their new home? They have a little bag that they all go home with, and in that bag is their um, shop record book and a bunch of information from the um, food company that we feed all of our puppies and some coupons for your dog food. They go home with a blanket. They go home with a toy. They go home with their microchip information. And then um, if they are a blanket, a toy, usually depending if you're really close by, um, I'm not going to give you pee pads, but if you're far away, then you'll have pee pads in there as well. And that's it. Yeah. Oh, and their toy. Their, their Kika's Klikai toy. So everybody goes home with um, our toy that we've been giving out for probably close to nine years now. A long time. And um, in case you don't know, um, everybody goes home with one of these. And a lot of times we see or hear from our puppy owners that this ends up being everybody's favorite toy. And um, they try to salvage them or they, they sew the ears back on or eventually they'll ask us for another one because the dogs love it so much. I'm not sure if you all know this, but you don't have to stay on live. Um, if you are um, wanting to go back to something, you can go back anytime during the live and even after. It'll, it'll replay forever on our channel, um, but you'll be able to go back in the beginning. So you can do that either now or afterwards and see them. But they were on in the very beginning, and I put them up close to the camera as well. Uh oh. Over the caterpillar. Oh no! And 
or my my two computers, one of them is like live live, and the other one's like a few seconds late. So yeah. So Brayden pointed it out on the one that was a few <laughs> seconds late. Um. So, oh my God, I lost the train of thought. I have no idea what you were saying. I'm sorry. I was answering. Oh, how many were in Ziggy's <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Woo. Um. So, anyways, I hate to say it because. I don't know if we're accurate, but I will tell you what we thought we saw. Four to five, I'm sorry, five to six. Um, we saw four in one view. So we know for sure there was four in there because when you see them all in one view, you could see all four of them moving. Um, there's definitely four, but we think maybe five or six. Um, Siggy has always given five or six. So I'm anticipating five or six. We'll see how accurate we are if we did five or six all. <laughs> Put it on the lower one. It is. They can't see that. Do they see it? Yeah, now they can. Yeah. Hi, mister. That was fun. You played at the balls? Look. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Okay. Next. Oh, um. Ouch. Will Trout and Sasha's litter go out to the wait list this weekend? That's the plan. Uh, yes, they turn four weeks old tomorrow, so we um, will hopefully get our video done. I always do a video of the puppies before we offer them so that you guys can see um, them active and a little bit about their personalities. So as soon as we get that done, hopefully, good boy, good boy, good boy. Uh, so that? This is little Cato. Good boy. He, out of all this mess, he went over there and pottied on the pee pad. And I'm proud of him for that. Ow! And Rupert <laughs> is mean. He just bit my leg. Rupert is who, Jasper? Yes. Uh, Jennifer, who's getting him, said that his name will be Jet. Okay, Jet. You need to stop chomping on me. <laughs> he looks like a Rupert. He looks like a Rupert. He yeah. is a Rupert. Did you explain why he was calling Rupert? Yes. Yeah. We, uh -huh. we explained. Um, so, okay. Did I answer that last question? Uh, the wait list, yeah, I think you did. I did, I think. If I didn't, sorry. Oh, yeah. If not, if, if not on Friday, um, it will be sometime this weekend. That's what I was finishing before I had to say good job. i got to fix my sharp chair. Are we still on low? Yes, we are. How do you guys like the views? That's what I want to hear. Do you guys like the lower angle view and being able to switch cameras or um, up to the other puppies? Do you guys enjoy that? Or do you want to see just one view all the time? And how's our sound since we don't know? We haven't heard any complaints. Um, a few weeks ago, we had some, some sound issues, and hopefully we fixed that. chance for red and white puppies? No. So Siggy does not have the red gene, um, so she cannot produce red puppies. Love it. Sound is perfect. Love the various views. Good boy. That was a good boy. Good boy, Jess. Good boy. Multiple views are awesome. Yay. That's good. I need... Um, okay. I like the different views and the sound is good. Wonderful. Thank you guys for the feedback. So in order for us to be live and to be able to um, answer questions, we can't hear ourselves unless I wear headphones because um, if we did, it would interfere. And so I chose not to wear headphones because I move too much and the puppies will just get a hold of my AirPods and eat them. So. I appreciate the feedback. All right, back, back, back. Um. Uh, Seven fifty-one. Oh my gosh, it's already almost eight. Gosh, time flies by when you're having fun. Last week went by really fast too. Um, so
so that's awesome. If you guys have any last minute questions, make sure you guys <laughs> put them in the comments so that we get to it before we have to end this session. It's going to end in what, eight minutes. Should, um, hey, you want to let Noel in? Oh, I, actually, yeah, I was going to let Noel in, but if we let everyone in, it's going to go crazy. So if you can, just let Noel in. If we let everybody in, they're going to go nuts, and it'll be way too loud. So... You, is your sister coming? Huh? <laughs> Can they see him? Yeah. Jax is, they hear, they know something's happening, so they're all like, ooh, who's coming in? Hi, Mama. You can come play with the babies and the balls? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi, Mama. Oh, bones. Bones, bones, bones. All bones, puppies. <laughs> so, um, this is Nala for anybody who's new. We talked about her earlier. She is related uh, to Kika. Um, and uh, hi, buddy. she is a little over a year old. She's very small. Um, for us, she's small. She's a very small mini, a little over 13 inches. Uh, she turned a year old in May, and she is 11 and a half pounds right now. So she's a little smaller than we normally want to see for um, our breeding program. We do have some toy size, but we thought she would be bigger. That's one of the times I messed up. So, like I said, I don't always get it right. Um, her parents are um, both standards, and she's a small mini. And we do get minis out of standards often, um, but I thought she would be a little bigger. She was the only puppy in the litter, um, and she just stopped growing. But she'll fill out. She'll thicken up a little bit. Uh, her chest will drop and stuff, but... Uh, She's a great babysitter and auntie to all the puppies. They think she has milk. They think she has milk. I don't know why, but they all try to nurse on. Well, they even try to nurse on Simba. They don't care. Um, so I want to bring her in, but if we bring everyone in, they'll definitely try to nurse. Um, so we have, if you guys saw last week, we had to um, show you guys how Diamond will mother everybody, and she was feeding all of these puppies. Um, she's pretty much dried up, but she uh, will still try to nurse them. And um, so we have to keep them separate as much as possible because otherwise she'll never dry up. Same with Rue. She, hey, you can't have all of them, Nala. Nala. You can't have all of them. Uh, and Nala, Simba, uh, Cessna, they're pretty loud um, talkers. But she's, Nala has the cutest talk. Like, her little talking back is, I don't know if she will. Nala, come here. Come here. Come here. She has the cutest bark and talk. Come here, Nala. Come here. Come here. You want this? Sit. No, sit. They want to hear you speak. You just snagged it right out of my hand. Come here, you little boo. Come here. Come here. Come speak. Speak. No. Sit. Speak. Ah, good girl. Good girl. Thank you. Thank you for listening. So we, we taught a few dogs to speak. Um, I regret it because we have a lot of dogs, and it gets overwhelming and obnoxious whenever they bark at you because they think that's what you want to hear, um, and that's what Nala does. So she's she's pretty good now, but for a long time, she, uh, <laughs> here, there's plenty of bones, puppies. They all want hers because once they shred it, then it tastes the best. So she uh, has learned now that, here baby, um, when I want her to speak, she'll speak. But for a long time, she just spoke all the time. You guys better watch it. She's going to get you. 
And so this is hierarchy, like she's not hurting them, but she's definitely telling them that this one's mine, get out of here, go get your own. And it's all part of the pack and part of raising dogs and teaching. So older dogs are always going to teach the younger dogs things that they can. And, hey, I can't even talk, Missy. Um, so it's an important part of raising the puppies is that the other dogs teach them manners, teach them um, respect and who is in charge and who's the boss. So of course I wouldn't leave her in here with all of these bones and walk away uh, because you never know, you don't want to uh, have her actually hurt them. But right now she's just teaching them. <laughs> and they have plenty of bones. It's not like they don't have other bones that they can get. They don't need hers. Which one is Jax? Jax. That That's one. funky <laughs> one right here. That's him. The spunk. Uh, we have a few more questions. Okay. Um, well, part of that question is Jax's dad is here. <laughs> Hello, Eric. P are you on the low? Yep. Can they see? <laughs> yeah, he's right in front. That's him. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> At what age can they sleep out of their crate at night? We don't go by an age. We go off of when you can trust that your dog is trained and potty, potty trained, house trained, right? And crate trained. So you don't want to let them have free run of the house if they're not crate trained yet. Because if you do, you're going to go backwards and then they're going to not want to go in their crate at all. So they need to be crate trained, they need to be potty trained, and you need to be able to trust them. So all of those, then, hopefully you guys can hear me over these puppies. Um, but then you can. Um, what color is the most rare in your opinion? The most rare? Correct. Um, for If you're asking for our breeding program or in it the... says in your opinion. Um, the whites. Um, but that's be from choice. So a lot of breeders, we don't produce whites or we don't produce many whites. Um, so that's by choice. And then after that, I would say reds. Um, the reds really are pretty new to our breed. We had one red born um, in Colorado, probably in the early 2000s, and then no reds were born for a, a really, really long time. We only had one red, and he was sterile. He wasn't even producing. Um, and then we all started testing. So the reds are getting more popular, uh, but they're probably still the rarest. And it's 8 o'clock. Oh my gosh. Okay, do we have questions or can we end? No, that's it. My gosh, okay. Then let's go back here and say goodbye. Who do I have? Who do I have? Who do I have? Oh, I have Mr. Jet. Come here, mister. You too. We'll, we'll get the brothers. You guys ready to say bye? All right, guys. So, as always, we thank you guys for supporting our channel. And we can't wait if they would be quiet. We can't wait to see you guys next week. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel if you are new and give us a thumbs up. Until next time, bye.